Good day are the headlines from the Philippine News Agency. We start the newscast with a commemoration of the 82nd Araw na Kagitingan or Day of Valor as President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. urged all Filipinos to uphold the bravery and resilience shown by the country's heroes and heroines who defended Bataan during World War II. In his message, Mark said while the celebration signifies the end of over three challenging months of defending Bataan Peninsula against the Japanese forces in 1942, it also symbolizes the unwavering Filipino spirit and resilience. He said that although Filipinos now live in a completely different era, the challenges before us are in no way less grave as both internal and external threat persists and posing risk to the progress of the country. This this morning, the President, together with the officials of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, led commemoration rites at Mount Samat National Shrine in Pilar, Bataan. It is a special place dedicated to honor the bravery and sacrifices of Filipino and American veterans of World War II. The President also took the opportunity to call on Filipinos not to allow oppression within their own territory. Amid China's continued aggression over the West Philippine Sea issue. Marcus also directed defense and military officials to assess and submit a report on their equipment as part of measures to improve the nation's defense capability, as well as undertake a study on the existing benefits for soldiers disabled in the line of duty. Now I'm magsilbing inspiration ng mga kaganapa ng 1942 at ang tagumpay natin ng 1945 sa ating lahat. Ngayon din sa ating kabataan at sa mga ating susunod na salinlahi, tulad ng pinamalas ng ating mga dakilang ninuno, hindi tayo dapat magpasupil at magpaapi, lalo na sa loob ng ating sariling bakuran. Naway, mapagkuna natin ito ng pangibayong kamalayan, tapang at lakas ng loob. Igit sa lahat, naway patuloy nitong pagtibay ng ating pagkakaisa at ang ating pagiging makabansa. House Speaker Martin Romualdez called upon all Filipinos to unite in defending the country and to uplift the lives of the poor. In his Aron na Kagitingan message, Romualdez said Filipinos should take this opportunity to commemorate the courage and bravery of our ancestors who fought for the country's freedom. He also underscored the importance of protecting the nation's borders and assert its legitimate claims in accordance with international law. Meanwhile, Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro Jr. reminds Filipinos to uphold the principles of democracy, peace, and freedom for which our forefathers fought so valiantly. He also encouraged them to honor the legacy of our ancestors by standing united in the face of challenges and working tirelessly towards a brighter future for our beloved country. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, meanwhile, reflects on the sacrifices made by soldiers who bravely defended the country during World War II. AFP Chief General Romeo Bronner Jr. says their selflessness and commitment to duty serve as an enduring inspiration to all Filipinos and remind them of the true meaning of valor and patriotism. Likewise, the Philippine National Police paid tribute to the bravery of the Filipino and American soldiers during the Bataan Debt March. It said their sacrifices should always be remembered as the true prize of freedom and must serve as a reminder of the essence of standing against tyranny and oppression. The latest after research survey revealed that almost one third of adult Filipinos support President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. and his administration. In its first quarter, the Gonang Masa survey conducted from March 11 to 14, around 31% of Filipinos said they support the president and his government with only 4% back the opposition. The survey also showed 20% are in favor of the Duterte family and their political allies. About 29% are considered independents who do not support the president and his administration. The Duterte family and the opposition and the remaining 15% said they did not know who to support or refuse to answer. Among the respondents, Metro Manila has the most number of Marcos supporters with 43%. 
followed by Visayas with 38%, Balance Luzon with at least 32%, and Mindanao with 17%. In terms of socioeconomic classes, about 32% from Class D and 32% from Class E expressed support to the President and his administration. Only 27 from Class A, B and C are aligned with him. In terms of age group, more supporters are higher among those age 55 to 64 at 39%, followed by age 45 to 59 at 35%. Supporters from those who are 75 years old and above are at 23%. The lowest supporters are from those who are 18 to 24 years old at 18%. Meanwhile, the DTFS got the support of at least half of the Filipinos from Mindanao at 53%, but with a slim chance in balanced Luzon with only 7%. The survey was conducted among 1,200 respondents using face-to-face -face interviews and has a margin of error of plus or minus 3 percentage points. Defense Secretary Gilberto Tudor Jr. says the recently concluded multilateral drills of the Philippines with the United States, Japan and Australia is part of the country's ongoing shift in defense and posture to protect its territories, especially its exclusive economic zone. He says Manila is evolving its defense strategies, bolster its own capabilities and foster alliance with allies and like-minded nations to ensure freedom of navigation, overflight and security in international waters. Teodoro was referring to the comprehensive archipelagic defense concept designed to enhance the country's capability to protect its entire territory for future generations. He also emphasized the dedication of the country in promoting a rules-based global order, especially in the maritime time domain where the primacy of UNCLOS or United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea is well established and enshrined in the 2016 Arbitral Award. Sunday's multilateral maritime cooperative activity of the four nations in the West Philippine Sea ended without a hitch. Two Chinese naval vessels were spotted at a distance from the activity but did not interfere. World headlines now, Pope Francis called upon political leaders to pause and try to mediate and negotiate for peace in the Middle East and Ukraine. During the Regina Coeli address, the Pope also urged the faithful to keep praying for a just and lasting peace, especially for the tormented Ukraine and for Palestine and Israel. On April 3, the pontiff reiterated his plea for humanitarian aid for the exhausted and suffering civilian population. He also called for the immediate release of hostages. Meanwhile, the World Food Program raised concerns about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza as many children are dying of hunger. WFP Executive Director Cindy McCain stressed the urgent need for humanitarian aid to enter Gaza, as many people there are suffering from hunger and severe malnutrition. The United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, reports that more than 30,000 children have been killed since the start of the conflict in the besieged enclave. It also said that one out of every three Palestinian children under age of two years is currently malnourished due to the severe food shortage. And that's the latest and the biggest stories on the PNA headlines. For more news updates, please visit our website, pna.gov.ph, or our Facebook and X account, Philippine News Agency. The PNA headlines is also streamed via the Servicio Facebook page. You may also watch the PNA headlines through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account via the News and Information Bureau website, nib.gov.ph, under PNA News, or on the Facebook page of the Presidential Communications Office or PCO. I am Stephanie Civiliano, and this is the PNA Headlines, bringing stories to unite the nation.